Howdy folks, look what I got on the uh, workbench today. It's an Oahu Publishing Company uh, guitar amplifier. Now these are kind of based off the Gretsch, I think 6155s. And uh, we're going to have a look at it. Um, Uncle Doug has reviewed one of these and kind of looked at it and I think got it working and fixed it up. So, you know, there's a lot of details in there. What I'm going to do is um, get this working. Now, it's not in the best condition in the world. You can see a lot of the, the Tolex has worn and ripped here. Some marks and, you know, especially down here, there's a bit of, bit of cloth already see the fibers sticking up um, but the grill cloth is good and I think that's original it is worn slightly here in the middle we have these um, these pins here which I believe on the other side on the inside hold in the speakers so or the speaker I should say alrighty so here's the back panel and a uh, couple of things I can see on here so for starters you've got the the Valco Chicago um, 51 is whoops where am I framing 51 is not the year this amp was made this amp was advertised as a 1956 model however when I go up here and I look at the serial number x19640 it tells me the x19 refers to 1953 okay the speaker here however does say 5503 I'm not sure if that means it will be a 55 uh, maybe the amp was made in 53 and the, the the serial number was put on there and then it just sat in a factory and then they threw a speaker in in 1955 and sold it in 1955 or 6 or whenever stranger things have happened however it appears to be an early to mid 1950s the only thing I have to do now is undo the back panel and uh, get the power cord out. This is a US amp, therefore the power transformer, the amplifier, uh, is a 110-120 volt uh, amplifier, so I will need to use an inverter for it. Let's, uh, let's open up the back panel and have a look, and we'll also look at the condition of the control panel in a moment. All right, so here's the amp with the back panel taken off. You can see it's it's really clean, um, really pretty much almost no dust on the inside. The front panel itself is in great condition. All the writing is there. It's very tidy. It's very neat. There are a couple little marks and scratches like this one here. I'm not going to touch these. I'm going to leave them as is. Uh, you've got your tone pot here, bass and treble. And you got your volume on this side, which controls the volume of all three inputs. And it just says instruments. The writing on the word instruments, the U there is slightly worn out. But, uh, you know, these are things to expect on an amplifier that's uh, well, close to, well, possibly even more than uh, 70 years old. Um, you got your on off switch there. I don't know if that's original. And uh, you got your fuse there, that might be original. Some things to note is these brown marks around the power and the fuse holder. I wonder if that's just the Bakelite or plastic that's just sort of stained. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, we'll find out more as we open this up. Now, I did buy this amplifier, being told, uh, as per the... Um, the, the description in the sale that the output was very low um, that could mean a number of things it could mean the field coil in the speaker because this is an old type speaker it's not a not a permanent magnet speaker it's an electromagnetic speaker this might be stuffed who knows um, the output transformer up here might be stuffed who knows so there's a lot of things that we're gonna have to go through and check um, Look, it might even be something as silly as, you know, these tubes in the wrong spot. So, now looking in the cabinet, which is beautiful, solid timber, I'm not seeing any particular um, tube uh, complement chart or anything like that. 
Um, there seems to be a filter cap on this side and one on this side, and if they are genuinely the original ones, then they are probably screwed. Um, let's look at some of the tubes here quickly. So we have an original, this would be the phase inverter tube. I'm going to start on this side to give myself more clearance. The valve socket is beautifully tight. That's great. So this is an RCA, uh, what do we say here, I, I6 or 1655. Um, I'll have to look up that code to see uh, how familiar I am with that, because uh, I'm not. Um, R5E, look it could even be the wrong tube. It's supposed to be, uh, and I'll bring up the schematics later on, it's supposed to be I believe a 6... SN7. Uh, we'll find out what that is in a moment if uh, if it is correct. And then we have another one here. Now this has a little cap on there and I'm going to have a look at what that is in a moment. I've brought up the schematic on the amplifier that, that has been known to be the equivalent. I'm just going to swing you around over here to the laptop so we can have a look. And it's the Gretsch um, yeah, G6155 or 56. So there's a 5Y3 GT in the uh, rectifier section just here. This goes up and goes through your field coil and your output transformer. And um, we've got your two 6V6s in push-pull, which is great. Um, my apologies, the, um, the, the um, phase inverter tube is a 6SC7, not a 6SN7. Um, which That's not what it says on there, so it could just be the wrong tubes been put in. We'll have a look at that, and the uh, the first the input tube here, the the preamp tube basically, uh, is a six SQ seven. So we'll have a look at that as well. Um, so bear with me for one moment, and we'll pull out the preamp tube and have a look and see if that's the right one. All right, so I've pulled out the first preamp tube here. Now I'm going to try to angle this to see if you can see what it might be. 6J7. Now the schematic I'm looking at says 6SQ7. However, looking at the amp, oftentimes you can really help by just looking at the valve socket, especially on these old amplifiers, and it says 6J7. Let me see if I can get a better shot of that. There it is up here at the top corner, 6J7. So the tube that's in the preamp section is correct. Whether or not it's alive and working is a different story. Uh, I'm going to find out more about this one here. Let's pull that one off again and have a look at the um, uh, the valve socket and see what it tells us in the valve socket. And then we'll help determine uh, whether or not that tube's the correct one or not. But so far, um, the schematic appears wrong, but this appears right. We'll have to find another schematic that has a 6J7 in the schematic in, v in uh, V1 position. V2 position, I'm going to have to look at what this tube is supposed to be to figure out some more. So we'll get to the bottom of it. All right, with a bit of digging around, I looked around some more and I found that this RCA1655 is in fact an equivalent of a um, 6SC7. And uh, I looked around for some more um, uh, schematics. Now, I haven't opened up this chassis yet, so I don't know 100% if this matches. But this Valco Supreme Model 51, uh, sorry, 510-1B appears to be closer in relation to this amplifier than anything else. Obviously, we're going to have to check some of these uh, values of resistors. Uh, the field coil says it's a one kilo ohm field coil. And uh, we'll measure that as well to make sure if that's correct. But everything else here seems to be spot on. So the next thing I'm going to do is slide this chassis out and have a look underneath and see what the go is. Now, um, buyer beware, when you're pulling a chassis out of an amplifier such as this, you have to be careful because all these wires that are running up to the field coil and the output transformer, well, the thing is, is that these wires are all probably permanently attached to the chassis down below. So pull this out carefully and... Uh, you know, be gentle, be very gentle and be very careful. 
All right, so I've got the chassis out. I've just flipped it over, and this is the safest way to sort of wedge this in here. Just flick the L shape around and have it sitting against these blocks here on the inside. So just looking through the thing, everything in here is original. Every filter cap, every coupling cap, everything. Everything is original except for the three-prong wire. Hooray! Uh, on the negative side, this is kind of... Oops, let me frame correctly. This has kind of just been put in haphazardly. It's just floating around there. So I am going to try to see if I can mount that a little bit better. Um, there's also no relief on here. So it's just been pushed through with the rubber grommet and hope for the best. Um, looking at the caps here. Now this one here looks like a... Uh, I think it was a... What does it say? A 40 microfarad, 450 volt. Got here, 40 microfarad, 450 volt. So that'll be easy enough to replace. Now, to, to keep this as original as possible, I, I don't want to get rid of these, but the thing is I want the amp to work. And one of the things I found that's probably going to stop the amp from working is, is this wire right here. Um, I'll grab it for you. Look at that. That wire goes here, it's not there. Now it is. And I reckon that has a lot to do with the fact that it might have had low output. It was probably just touching. Um, who knows? But I'm going to go through and actually resolder re all of these because they're all looking a little bit, um, a little weak. Uh, that one there doesn't have much solder on it. There's enough on there, but the wire's just been wrapped around it and, you know, and uh, that's all I found so far, but you know what? I am going to check over this amp. I'm going to resolder that wire. I'm going to look at some other things and um, look at this end as well. So this is the preamp side over here. Uh, we have another filter cap. This is a two two segment. I think. Um, ah, there we go. Ten, ten and ten microfarad at 450 volt as well. So you got the uh, the two sides there. Um, and, uh, what, what I'll do is, um, we'll just, we'll just have a little look around. Hey, what do you think now? Where, where's my torch gone? Actually, I'll probably don't need it. Some of these resistors here, you know, there's this one here, the brown, black, red, silver, uh, one kilo ohm, one kilo ohm. You know, that one's looking a bit dark. Uh, this one here, whoops. This one here, the brown, black, the yellow. What is it? 10 kilo? No, 100 kilo ohm. I'm going to do some more checks on it. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to fix this wire. And I reckon it goes right here. So let's do that, and then we'll move on to the next bit. Oh, and the reason why I'm going to fix this wire is because, if you look at it down this way, this yellow wire comes straight off it, right? And if you follow this yellow wire around, it goes to pin 3 of a 6v6. Pin 3 on a 6V6 is one of the plates. So, duh. This is probably coming off the field coil. It's probably one of the main high voltage lines coming out of the output transformer. Who knows? The reality is, is that no wonder. And the low volume might have been caused from the fact that if this thing was, was completely not making any contact... You've only got one side of the push-pull working on here, which means your amp's going to sound really low volume and really gritty and dirty, and it's not going to work properly. So this might be a really easy fix, and then we're home and hosed, we're done. Alrighty, so um, look, it appears that that little wire that was loose has fixed it, and um, we soldered that back on and everything's fine. I've had the amp heat soaking for a little while, the amp's on, you can see the heaters glowing on the uh, 5Y3 GT back there. There's our two 6V6s, so I get in under, under the skirt here and you can see them glowing. Okay, I don't know what the W5 uh, uh, on these mean, I don't know what that means at all. But then, uh, yeah, and then these two, um, you, obviously because they're, they're tin can, you just have to kind of touch them with the back of your hand and uh, I'm, I'm not going to get too close to them. You can hear the amp is silent. It's not until I turn the guitar up, being single coil. You hear that? That's really it. Or you can all probably also hear a helicopter in the background because 
Uh, we've been in bushfires. Fairly clean with the tone and the volume midway. Now as soon as I go past the halfway mark on the volume, now obviously you can you can hear the buzzing straight away. Okay, that's from my guitar. So when I go into the middle position and when I turn the volume off, it's still a quiet amp. That's cranked. And that's about as much hum as you, you'd, you'd expect from an amp that's 65 years old. So I'm going to go to about the, uh, what I would call the two-thirds position. Okay, um, yeah. sounding so that was basically on the uh, on the neck pickup I'm gonna I'm gonna crank the tone to about uh, three quarters okay so let's have a listen to this okay just... Kick ass. Um, let's turn the volume up nearly all the way. I don't want to blow the speaker. I mean, this speaker's, you know, pretty freaking old. Getting some really gnarly, dirty sounds out of this thing. So, you know, she goes okay. And I'm just putting my hands over the top of the valves here. There's no heat. There's no major issues. Power transformer's not even hot. Um, yeah, field coil is just warm to the touch. But um, let me put the, the, the tone and volume back about halfway. I'm going to put the tone up a bit more just to brighten it up. But the volume about halfway. And um, yeah, I mean, listen to this thing. It's great. Anyway, thanks guys. I really appreciate your support and love that you guys watch the channel. This is a pretty amazing little lamp for me because um, we don't get this sort of stuff in Australia. And if you do, it means someone's imported it themselves. Um, you know, it's kind of nice getting to watch all these other videos. Uh, I, I look up to those amp repairers like, you know, Uncle Doug and D-Labs. And even, even guys like, you know, um, uh, Mr. Carlson's Lab and... All those guys are amazing at what they do, and, and they're highly trained professionals. I am not. I'm, I'm just a musician. I'm a professional bass player. Um, and so I, I kind of look up to these guys because I like to tinker and I like to, to do stuff. And 
and fix things. And, and valve amps to me have always been one of those things that I've really enjoyed uh, working on and fix. Thanks everyone for watching. Really appreciate your support and uh, subscribe, uh, like the like the video and share it with your friends and tell them how cool I am and all that stuff.